I'm going to need a patience when I talk to him today. All right, so this morning, I made the mistake of reading tweets <laughs> while I'm doing the tape reading with you. Now, first of all, the second regret I had is not just simply staying with what I intend to do, which is in the afternoon. But I'm trying to give you as much as I possibly can this year and help you and take you into the charts, draw your attention to certain things. That way you can see by experience that you'll get over time. You'll learn what you're pursuing. And you may not even understand what you're looking for right now. You just want to make money. That's what you're here for. You're trying to make money. And I get it. But there's things you have to understand before you can get to that point. I'm going to say a few things in the beginning while your attention span is at the highest. And usually people drop off after I start going on to a. Breakneck uh, paste rant. You are not to be touching a trade entry. You're not supposed to be touching it with a paper trading account, not a demo account, not a funded account, not a live account. None of you know what the fuck you're doing. Okay? None of you. You're in here. You're waiting for me to drop some buzzword. And what I'm trying to teach you is the ebb and flow of these markets, where it's going to move from, what level is going to be important. If you're trying to push a trade entry within 930 to 10 o'clock, you're fucking gambling. Okay? Is that clear enough for you? You're clearly impatient if you're pushing the button. And I know some of you are doing it. You're sending me messages in Telegram. You're sending me emails. Some of you are texting me on my phone. I got to change my fucking phone number now. I am not an oracle, okay? I'm not going to tell you where to get in a trade. What I'm teaching you to do is observe price action. It's generic. It's not going to have, I mean, how many times do I have to say this? It's like 51st fucking dates with some of you. I literally am telling you every time, do not try to push the button. That's the whole point of teaching this. And then when you're complaining that you're confused, you're complaining that you took a loss, which is exactly what I told you to do in your journal. You record those things. You keep them personal, private. Because then you can take yourself to the woodshed. I don't have to do these types of lectures. These are divisive, and I'm trying not to be divisive. In the past, I didn't give a fuck. Who I offended, but I'm trying my best this year to be very patient when I'm not. These types of things make me extremely impatient. I don't have patience for it. I booted people out of my paid mentorship that acted like some of you. If you don't listen to the instructions I'm giving right now, where do you think you're going to be when we get into the weightier matters and things that I'm teaching that are more technical? If you can't even control yourself right now and listen to the simple instructions of you're reading the tape, we're watching it live. I'm going to take your attention to a specific price level, and then you're going to watch and observe. How does it react there? Why? Why is that even beneficial? For the folks that are here and you're confused or you are trying to push the button and you took a trade and you lost, you are not going to learn this. OK, you're not. You're going to fail. You will not make money here. No matter what I do, you are going to fail at it. I've learned that in mentoring individuals with that personality, that stubbornness that you're going to just find your way through it the way you want to find your way. You're trying to have it your way mentorship. And I'm telling you, have it your way mentorship is a fucking pathway to broke failure regret and you're going to try like i've had other students try to do and try to fault me for it when that's bullshit the first 30 minutes you're observing you don't have the skill set or the ability to trade underneath that first 30 minutes you don't know what you're looking for you don't know 
So what's the benefit of waiting for that first 30 minutes? That's the opening range. After that, the buy side and the sell side, they're going to be attacked. One of the other is going to be attacked. Think of it like the way I teach the Asian range in Forex. So when I'm walking you through in either tweets or on the live sessions, and I'm telling you, okay, watch this level here, watch this level here. What you're allowing for and what I'm allowing for, because I understand how this works. You're coming here with such a small understanding, with an ex ex exaggerated expectation. You think you're going to own the fucking world by November. You're not. You're not. Okay, you're not. If you've been misguided up to this point, just understand that it is going to be a lot of work. And it's going to feel like in the beginning, you're not getting anywhere. And that's absolutely normal. But this is how you get blocked on Twitter. If you tweet to me that you just took a loss or you made money in a trade, I swear to God, I'm blocking you. I'm done. You're not listening. I don't give a fuck about your trade result. I don't care if you made money or lost because what you're telling me is in the biggest, boldest neon fucking sign is ICT. I don't fucking listen. I don't listen. So I'm not going to waste my time and attention on anything that you do me. So I'm blocking that. Now, do I have your attention now? So you're like, fuck off then. I'm out of here. I'm going to follow. Follow someone else. I'm only here to teach. That's it. I'm doing this fucking shit for free. And you aren't even listening. <laughs> I don't understand. I don't understand. And you think that you're going to beat this industry with Mickey Mouse effort like that? You can't even stay off of a demo or without pushing the button. We haven't even been one month into this yet. And I have folks literally showing every characteristic that they're going to fail at this. And in November, they'll be the ones that voice, oh, I went through the ICT mentorship. It's bullshit. It didn't work. But I'm going to be trading it. You're going to see other people trading it. The market's going to be called. Every level is going to be hit. Bottom line is, is you're going to have your excuse because you didn't follow the instructions. And the instructions are going to lead you to the results that you really want. But you think it's too much work. I ain't got time for this bullshit. I want to know what's going on. Where's the signal? Where's the entry? Where's the stop? You're never going to learn it like that. You're never, ever going to fucking learn it like that. My pattern, my specific setup for the day or that morning session or within that particular fractal and price action may not be the one that fits you. I can't make it any plainer than that. Not everybody's going to trade a fucking RSI divergence. Nobody is going to say, hey, you know. I like this guy trading the MACD over here and he's using pivot points. And I like this guy over here doing Elliott Wave. Uh, I'm going to pick and choose whenever I feel impulsive to take which one I like at the time. That's a rookie mistake. And you're taking every point of reference that I'm calling out. I never said short it. I never said buy it. I'm saying watch it. See if it respects it. Why? Why did I use those fucking terms? Go back and listen to the other times I mentioned it. We're inside the opening range, that first 30 minutes. But some of you don't want to take notes when you're watching my lectures on YouTube. You don't want to take notes while I'm giving you these rants. But I'm teaching you. The things that you need to understand are in these boring discussions. How do I know this? When do I know not to do that? It's when I'm talking to you. But you want to see the little squiggly line bullshit. Show me the fair value gap, the fucking things that I'm drawing on a chart. That's the least important thing. That's the least important thing, but you think it's the most paramount thing there is. And it's very frustrating. This is why it's very difficult. And this is why I always fucking recorded my lectures because most of them had this shit in it and I had to go back and edit all out. And I'm going to offend some of you and some of you may want to unfollow me when you hear me talk like this. Good! Save me my fucking piece of fucking mine and my time and yours. Because if you don't want to listen to the instructions I'm giving you right now in the beginning, you're sure as fuck ain't going to listen to me when I get into the difficult stuff. This is nothing. All I'm asking you to do is observe price from one point to the next. That's all you're doing. And the benefit of having done so 
is you're going to start seeing things that repeat that your eye draws to. The thing that makes most sense to you at your present understanding, you're going to explore that. So that way your study on your own time is more beneficial. I'm trying to make you do this the most efficient way possible, but I'm a, I'm a realist. You can't just watch a fucking video, like a demonstration, like a tutorial, and say, oh yeah, Gordon Ramsay just showed me how to make fucking stuffed peppers with fucking lamb meat. Oh, I'm going to go out and do that right now. The fuck you are. You're going to burn some shit up. You're going to fucking make the house stink. Your fucking spouse is going to say, why the fuck did you even bother doing this? Let's go to Outback. What the fuck? You're trying to make this harder than it needs to be because you're not willing to listen. That's a character flaw. And that's exactly what I talk about all the time in this industry. It's a mirror. It's going to show you that you aren't fucking ready. You aren't ready. If you are looking at me in these live streams, calling out these levels and observing specific things and taking your attention to those very moments to watch that, that's not a fucking trade. There's no secret code language I'm giving any of you. Nudge, nudge, here, this is a fucking trade. I can't make it any more plainer than this now, okay? You're watching how price delivers. How it moves from one point of interest to the next within a specific time window. Over time doing that, okay, over time doing that, you will start seeing things that you don't fully appreciate right now because you've seen it multiple times. Me pointing to fair value gaps, just look at the trolls. Oh, it's cherry picked. But then when I'm calling them live and it reacts off of it, they are silent. If you're pushing a button or chomping at the bit, impatient to push a button to get some reaction on the things I'm talking about, when the only stage you're in right now is this tape reading. Tape reading is no fucking trading. Not a demo, not a paper trade, not a funded account, not a live account. If I'm talking about buy side liquidity in the first 30 minutes, what you're doing is you're, we you're weighing and measuring the ability for the price to want to get to that level. If it doesn't go there, what did I teach you yesterday? If it fails to go to a specific inefficiency, consequent encroachment, or buy side, if it's failing to get up there, it's showing you what? An unwillingness to go there. So what's it going to do? It's going to Go the other direction. So you're weighing out what the market's trying to work most side, which side of the opening range is it trying to work on. Look at the first 30 minutes of ES today. Where did it spend the majority of the time in that first 30 minutes? The upper portion. And it was unwilling to clear out any significant run above the two buy-side liquidity pools I had your attention to. So how do you know within the first 30 minutes what side to trust? I gave you a five-minute order block. Watch that. See if it wants to respect that. And I said, watch the volume imbalance. And I said, breaker. How many fucking PD arrays was that? Three. Oh, shit. For the note takers, for the people that are listening and taking fucking notes, they're saying to themselves, oh, shit. He did say when three PD arrays fail, you're fucked. It's going the other direction. Nobody said it was a fucking long entry. Nobody said buy it. I said watch, observe, study, see what it's doing. See if it respects it. You have to look at price with a lot of flexibility right now. Not holding any expectation over yourself or the live streams or what you think you're going to be able to do a week from now. You can't think about it like that. You have to be flexible. Allow yourself to learn this. But you're not going to fucking learn it. You know, here, I'm going to give you a couple of scenarios. Here's what happened. When I was a younger person, and I used to do card tricks and shit with my friends and stuff. I have friends. You know who they are. You're probably one of them, and you fucking know it. Okay, And I can see you in my, in my comments on my Twitter space, and I can see you in my comments on my videos, too. 
and you're some of the ones that are sending messages through Telegram and sending me emails. And I don't mind helping. I don't mind answering a question if it's something that I haven't said at nauseum. But these things, I have said this a lot. Don't trade. Don't push the button. You're, tra you're tape reading. But invariably, some individuals, they see somebody demonstrate something. Do a card trick. Hey, look, let me show you how to swing the bat over here. And then they want to do the, they want to grab it and show you how they can do it right away without any practice. And then it's fucking a, a train wreck. It's impatience. Impatience is going to fucking bury you before you have a chance to even really learn how to do this. You're going to fail and you might not see it. Some of you that are doing these types of things, you think you're going to be the exception. And I'm telling you, that's exactly what young ICT thought too. And I was humbled over and over and over again. You will not be the exception. And I say that with all the love and all of the respect and all of the interest in you succeeding. I want to see you succeed. I do. I swear to God almighty, I want to see you succeed. But you have to let me help you. You have to let that process unfold the way I'm teaching you. If you do not submit to this process, it's impossible for you to, to be successful in it. You're going to fail. If you're looking at anything in addition to the things I'm talking about in the tweets, is that a catalyst for you to want to push the button? If it is, if you're thinking, well, if this is what I've been in trade, you're doing it wrong. Don't ask me. Don't even bring it up. That's why I say focus on what it is I'm bringing your attention to and only that. In your own journal, you add all that extra stuff there. You don't bring it to the equation or the conversation while we're doing tape reading. Number one, I predominantly do not even look at tweets while I'm doing live sessions or when I'm doing these types of things here. Because invariably, I'm going to see something that's going to fucking trigger me. And it's either going to take me off the, the topic I want to tackle or it's going to cause me rage because I see someone and I know some people are going to come here that are new, but I see some names that repeat. I've recognized you with either liking a, a tweet or retweeting something or commenting to someone else. So you've been around for a little while. You've, you've heard me say, don't push a button. You've heard me talk about the opening range. But if you're doing Netflix and chill with ICT videos, you're going to not get what you're here for. You're going to have selective hearing. You're going to pick up whatever you think is useful when you have no idea what makes it useful. It's just something that you're going on a hunch. Oh, yeah, this is that. This is that order block. This is that fair value guy. This is that new implied fair value guy. Now all you want to be worrying about that now. I have to get this off me. Otherwise, it'll eat at me all day long. When you're trained with me personally, side by side, I did it in the 90s. This is how they got it. And sometimes it wasn't pleasurable. It wasn't fun. It was uncomfortable. But it's it's the reality. You can't do stupid shit and expect good results. Okay, you can't. And if you're trying to, oh, well, you know, come on, man. There was a loss going long. Nobody said go long. I said, watch. Trust me, there will be very finite terms where you can judge my approval or not the approval, but the, the accuracy of what it is I'm looking for. OK, I will give that to you this year. I will. I promise you that's coming. But in the beginning stages to, to get everybody at least on the same foundation, whether you've been doing this for a while or not, whether you're familiar with what I do and teach, it's irrelevant. If I get everybody on the same page, knowing that we're just looking at price action, we're not trying to, we're not trying to forecast the actual high and low. We're not trying to time an entry. We're not doing that because this skill of finding your individual trade setup and entry, that's a unique thing. Not all of us are going to have that same entry. When we do sessions where I tell you, okay, you're going to use this PD array. 
with your demo account, your paper trading, and I'm going to ask you all to share your chart where it shows your entries were in and out. Most of you will not want to do that because you think it's a report card and it's not going to be good enough. And you're going to be scared. You'll maybe share it and you'll see other people doing better than what you did and you're going to delete your tweet. Don't do that. You're robbing yourself of the best opportunity how to learn this. And when it's uncomfortable, that's exactly what it's supposed to fucking feel like. Every time that you push a trade, when you want to get into a live account, when you trade your funded accounts, guess what you're doing? You're casting your opinion into the abyss of that hard right edge. And you don't know what the outcome is going to be. So you have to desensitize yourself now while everybody's doing the same thing. Nobody's better than the other. You're all in the same stage of learning. Regardless of how long you've been with me, if you've been profitable, funded, I don't give a fuck. This year's mentorship is different. If you can't recognize that, even my charter members are thinking, this is something totally different. Yes, this is the brass tax. But I also know that this type of training is going to weed out the people that are not going to do well and it's going to do do it quickly but i don't want to see any of you fall behind i don't want to see you fall victim to yourself your own character falls before you have a chance to cope and manage them and replace them with more positive characteristics of a trader or speculator Everything I'm saying does not translate to an entry. It does not translate to a trade. What you're doing is seeing those moments in price action at the times I'm prompting you to look at them. Study it. See, does it do specific things that you are expecting based on the things I teach on my YouTube channel? The order block shouldn't do what? Shouldn't go past the mean threshold. What happens if it does? That's a warning sign. And I mentioned the volume imbalance below it. What happens if it goes through that? It can do that, but guess how many PD rates now is failing too? And I said the bullish breaker. Well, if it goes below that and shows no willingness to support anything there, what is it indicating to you? It's going to want to do what? Expand lower. Seek discount. Go look at the tweets, folks. That's why I'm doing it. I'm confused. I can't follow your tweets. Then wait until the session's over. Go back, take every individual tweet and place it on your chart and it'll make perfect sense to you then. I'm telling you, that's how you're supposed to be doing it. For those that are here watching it live, you have the benefit of just seeing it and looking at it over your chart in real time. But there's no disadvantage for those that can't do it because you literally can take that tweet that's time and date stamped Plot it right on your trading view chart and you'll see where I was pointing your attention to and how we are watching how it's going to reach the next level. Then what are you supposed to do with that? What's the benefit? Once it goes there and I say, okay, you know, screenshot this, what are you supposed to be doing? You're supposed to be looking at how much time it took before it repelled away from that level, started gravitating to another level within five handles. Does it offer a range of five handles? If it does, was there a setup in there that you can identify? What do you mean? I thought you were supposed to tell me. I'm telling you. I'm telling you how to find your setup. Using the things I've taught, what, what pattern exists in that price run? Well, in the fair value gap that I mentioned this morning, using the 650 candle, time candle, six, 10 minutes to seven, basically, in New York local time. I mentioned I want to see that fair value gap act as resistance. Then the market does what? Creates a up close candle into that fair value gap. Market moves away, comes back up again, and it spends multiple times trading into the midpoint of that up close candle. For those that have had the charts in front of them, it's the 10.05. Five minutes after 10 candle this morning, that one singular up close candle. 
in the subsequent candles after that, it was trading up into both the fair value gap low from 650's candle. And then we had what? Expansion. Reaching down into the fair value gap I mentioned below it. Seeking what? Discount. That candle is formed at the 650 time candle on one minute chart. It trades down to it and then blows out the low. And I said, you want to screenshot this and label it 50% of the trade off here. But I didn't take a trade. You didn't take a trade. Oh, what are we doing with all this? You're conditioning yourself and you're logging it. When I teach you how to journal, I told you, you're giving yourself positive self-talk. You are conditioning your subconscious after the fact, using the points of reference that I'm giving you real time as the chart creates these specific things and it draws to the levels I'm talking about. You're screenshotting that. And then you're adding all your observations later on. Not then. You don't have time to do that. You're watching price. Price gravitates all the way back up to the imbalance, which I did not. I was losing my shit when I was reading these tweets. At nine minutes after 10, that fair value gap on the one-minute chart, it comes back, reprices to that. does not come back up to the fair value gap formed at 7.05. So five minutes after seven, that candle, that's your fair value gap. That was the one I drew your attention to first, below the breaker, below the volume and balance, and below the five-minute bullish order block. So we saw price spend majority of the time within the first 30 minutes in the upper 50% of that 30-minute range from 9.30 to 10 o'clock. And it did what? It failed. It failed to take 4020.75 buy side. It, it couldn't do it. And then it showed a willingness to do what? Go out below the low of the first 30 minutes of trading. So what we're doing is we're giving the market time to run on buy side. In the first 30 minutes, you don't know what it's going to do. You don't know. So how do you learn to trust these things, ICT? How do you do this and how you do that? By doing what I'm walking you through in these tweets or in the live sessions. But some of you don't want to learn. You want to be spoon-fed. And you didn't want to lie to me after the fact. But ICT, you're, you don't understand. I'm, this is what I'm really trying to do. No, you're full of shit. You're trying to take a trade. I guarantee you, you've probably taken three trades this morning. And you regret it. And then the move that unfolded, you weren't part of that. And you feel regret. You feel like you got confused and tricked. And I didn't tell you exactly what you wanted to hear. When I'm telling you, I'm telling you what you need to hear. I'm telling you what you need to study and observe. Because you don't have the experience to know what to do in that first 30 minutes. So the first stage of your learning is submit to that first 30 minutes. That's that's part of this. That first 30 minutes is much like a Asian session in Forex, whereas Asian Asian range, rather not Asian session, Asian range is several hours in, in length and in time. But the first 30 minutes after midnight New York local time, that's an opening range too. But at 930, I'm looking at that opening range. And we've had a large trending day yesterday. We had a large range expansion to the downside. We had our targets reached. So the next morning session is going to be more difficult than it would be on another day. So you have to be very, very careful and demand more insight, more information, because you don't want to be what? In a hurry, impatient to go and chase something. So you have to have a filter, a time filter. You allow for that first 30 minutes. But what happens if it takes off and runs 25 handles? You fucking missed it. <laughs> How about that for logic? But you don't want to accept that because you want to be able to do every fucking micro move. Just because you watch some videos. You think that's what you're supposed to be able to do. And that's bullshit. Nobody said you're supposed to be doing that. 
I sure as hell didn't say that. So you have to have realistic expectations. You have to be diligent about what it is that you're being told to do, what not to do, and live in that. Allow yourself to develop under those controlled conditions. You're safe. It's okay to make a mistake. If you have an opinion about, okay, Michael's saying, watch this level here, and he's pointing out something below the marketplace. Okay. So is it showing me anything in there that would lead to a trade? If you don't see it and price moves, you'll go back and find it in hindsight, and that's still learning. But you don't want to be pushing a button thinking you understand what I might be hinting at when I'm not hinting at anything. I'm just telling you, watch this level here. Note this here. These are areas I'm watching on my own chart. I am not putting things out there that are ambiguous that mean nothing. I'm drawing your attention to the very specific things that I'm utilizing to determine a bias within a narrative. The first 30 minutes, if I don't know right away what it's going to do, I'm submitting myself to that first 30 minutes myself. I'm doing that. But if I have an inclination that it's going to do a specific thing, run for a liquidity, run for an imbalance, then I'm going to go right in there. And as soon as it does it, if it's in the first 30 minutes, I'm in there. I'm doing the trade. But we have a large range day yesterday, and everybody's going to want to do what? Jump on board. So. The market will, most times, not always, most times, reach for some measure of buy side. Why? Because if it's going to go down, like I said yesterday, it can go up the purge buy side to allow smart money to assume shorts against that buy side liquidity. I was offering the market the opportunity to present to, to me and you by highlighting that. 4020.75 and 4024 levels. If it doesn't reach there and you're in the first 30 minutes, nothing has happened. I gave you three specific PD arrays to watch and observe. You know, if you've been paying attention and taking notes, for the folks that know I've said this, do me a favor. And tweet to me, yes, you have said if three PD arrays fail, that's problematic on a bias or a directional view on price. And it's going to most likely go the other direction. If you know I've said that, please tweet that and say you've heard me say that because I know I have. I haven't just said it one time. I've said it multiple times. But if I say order block or fair value gap or volume balance, if you're here to find something to talk about that didn't happen, correctly, you're going to have a whole lot of opportunity to do that erroneously. Not everything I'm referring to is an entry. There are measuring points, balance points, points of reference. That way we see what is the ebb and flow of price? Is it respecting this level? Is it not respecting it? If it goes through it with a lot of speed and magnitude, that is also a characteristic that is important. When we had price return back to that fair value gap at the nine minute after 10 candle, one minute, yes. Came all the way back up, touched the bearish order block. Spent about four or five candles in there and then repriced lower, then made the lower low. As it was dropping, I said that we want to see it go through the fair value gap from 650 time candle and then offer if it comes back to it resistance now it went through the initial low at 1015 so once it takes out that low we're not interested in seeing it return back to that fair value gap then because we've expanded and made another lower low so there's no need for it to come back to that fair value gap that's formed on the 650 candle To come back to that level is problematic, which is why I said that hypothetically your stop loss on this idea would be 4000.5 or 4,001 half of a point to which it 
return back to, but not before trading to 39.91 to offer a partial near the low. So 50% of the trade idea that you're logging, you may not have seen the setup, but you know the logic I'm talking about because I'm mentioning it in the tweets. Once everything's done, you take that information, go back into the chart, and you study. What do you, what do you see? What is it you see? For some of you, you're going to see the consequent encroachment of the low in the candle formed at 930. 938, rather, sorry. And the market trades up into that fair value gap I mentioned around the 4,007 levels, what it is price-wise, but the actual candle for the fair value gap is at five minutes after seven. Some of you may see that retracement back on the fair value gap after it made the lower low. That's your optimal trade entry. Leaving the range of that first 30 minutes. Not expecting it to come back into it. It doesn't need to. It's done its work by staying in the upper half of it and then failing to go to buy side. It ran out below the low. Okay, so what does that tell us? From a narrative stance, it says it's going to be seeking discount. Price will explore going lower into inefficiencies that are below market price, which is why I took your attention to the candle at 650. That's your fair value get that was below price. And then the old low. And then once we went through them, 50% of the trade comes off. Why? Why? Because it could go down and take the low, make a lower low, put people on the wrong side selling short on a breakout, and then come all the way back up against the entirety of the daily range. It just so happens it retraces back up into that fair value gap formed at the 9 minutes or 10 or 10 zero 09 handle time wise. Trading back up into the 4,005 level, essentially. And then repricing lower to make a lower low. So now we had two times making a lower low. Why did I say 39.91 and I think it was three quarters? If you measure the low of 39.95.50, which was the initial low of the day, and the 39.88 level, which is the top of the next new week opening gap that I gave you yesterday, below the market price. Midway between that, you get 39.91 and three quarters, or 0.75. And as price was reaching down into it, I tweeted, you would screenshot this right here, noting that your partial would be there. And then you'd have a limit order sitting at 39.88.25, which would allow for what? 39.88, even if it traded to that, the buy limit order would trigger and that would collapse the trade. But because we had what? Two stages of offset distribution. That means the market rallied above the buy side above 40.15. Those highs at 8.40, looking at your one minute chart. Look at the bottom of the chart at 08 colon 45. Go straight up from there. Just to the right of that, you'll see there's relative equal highs on a one minute chart. That's a buy side liquidity pull there. The market rallied above that, but failed to get to 4020.75. Spent the majority of the time in the first 30 minutes in the upper half of that range. What range? The opening range, which is the first 30 minutes of trading. If you don't have a hard line bias, if you don't know exactly what you're doing, you wait that first 30 minutes and you just let price tell you what it wants to do. You will not get into high of the day. You will not get into low of the day and you don't fucking need to. You don't need to. I'm teaching you to do what? Find five handles first. That's your first goal is be able to go into the chart, not necessarily live right now, because that's not even where you're supposed to be at in your development. You should be able to identify where five handles are. In hindsight, where's the setups? Where do you see it? Because if you can't see it there, you sure as hell aren't going to be able to see it when it's live. 
you won't you won't know what it looks like which is the reason why i'm giving you these prompts to screenshot that way you can look at it right then and there at this moment you have some information to digest it would be the equivalent of if you're watching it without me saying anything you should be seeing something right then and there and then i tell you what the label is so that way you know this is what i should be observing at that moment at this instant right here this is what i should be thinking not because you shouldn't already know it but i'm conditioning you to uh, subconsciously retain this as a false memory you're tricking your brain into thinking you knew this in advance when i'm calling it beforehand i'm lending my experience to you i'm lending it i'm prompting you to do the things that if you would have known how to do this you would be seeing this very thing at that instance in time that very second that moment in time this is the part that you should be observing at that moment so since you don't have that skill set or the understanding of it, that's what tape reading is. I'm literally prompting you to pull out the, at the very specific times when Price is doing certain things that's going to be helpful to you, which leads to what? Understanding how the market moves from one PD array, from discount to premium, from premium to discount, one PD array to the next. But some of you are just trying too hard to do other shit or trade. And you're not just simply taking what it is I'm giving you, which, you know, months from now, if you submit to it, you're going to know how you were trying to make it harder than it needs to be. You're, pro you're prolonging your learning, not me. I'm every day showing up. But you can say you're showing up every day too. But if you're showing up every day and you're not paying full attention, not focusing on the things I'm telling you to do and avoiding the things I'm telling you not to do, pushing a button, demo trading. I'm going to say it for the folks that didn't hear me the first couple of minutes of this session. If you share that you have taken a trade, whether that's profitable or losing, do not include my handle in that tweet because I will block you. I don't want to see it. I don't care to know. When I want to know, I'll ask you. Then you can all flood the the responses to that tweet when I'm asking. But right now, I need to have the peace of mind knowing that if you're hurting yourself, I don't want to know about it because you're not listening. And if you're making money, you're not learning. The only thing you're doing is getting hopped up on goofballs. And when the party ends in November and you didn't learn how to do this on your own, you're not going to have that experience anymore. You're going to be right back in where you are right now learning next to nothing looking at other people wishing that you could have done what they were doing and i mean this sincerely it's not that i don't care about you i don't want to be bothered by this shit that is is a testimony that you're not listening just like when i ask you not to call me the greatest of all times and the goat and this shit still happens it makes me angry as fuck when i see it i can't stand it it's like you're calling me a derogatory term. I know what you're saying, but I don't want that. I don't want that label on me. So when you listen to me and I'm doing these live sessions and or calling out things on Twitter, keep the focus on whatever it is I'm taking your attention to at that moment. And then you explore your chart at that moment. Go into those screenshots. And what do you see? Remember all the examples of me doing that over the years? Or I, Say, you know, what do you see? W-D-Y-S, uh, question mark. And I'll show you a piece of price action. And for the people that don't really want to learn or, you know, cynics, oh, it's not enough information here. There's a lot of fucking information in the things I'm sharing. The thing I'm looking for you to identify is in that piece of price action. And the people that understand, they can see it. The folks that have not learned enough yet, they won't see it. And that's not a problem. It means that that's an opportunity for you to learn more. You dig into that, but you're looking at this thinking, you know how to learn better than I know how to teach you. And that may sound, sound arrogant on my part, but it's more arrogant for you to think that you know what you're supposed to learn when you have no idea what the fuck you're doing or what it is I'm going to teach. I mean, think about the, think about the level of absurdity to assume going to someone that's proven that they understand something, making themselves available, 
telling you what to do, tell you what to avoid, and then you do everything diametrically opposed to the instructions. And then mention that you're confused, mention that you're lost, mention that you just took a loss, you took a losing trade today. Everything in that is communicating that you are the fucking problem. Just like I had paid students that were the fucking problem. They couldn't see it. They were so blinded by their perception of themselves. There's no way they could make a mistake. There's no way they done this wrong. When everything they were showing, I'd say, okay, what are you doing? Well, I'm, I'm going long in Euro. Why the fuck are you going long, long in Euro when I'm talking about in the analysis that we're going down to these levels here and it's going to those levels, but they're arm wrestling me saying they can't get it to work because they're going against what I'm telling them that's going to happen in the marketplace. Is that sound logic? Is that a, is that a good argument to make? No, no, it's not. And it's tiresome. It's tiresome when I see folks not listening, when I have done this, to a degree of redundancy that is nauseating even for me. So I know it's nauseating for the listeners, but I care enough to tell you you're fucking up. You're doing it wrong. You're not listening. You're doing extra shit when it's not expected of you. You wanna trade. You wanna push the button and find entry points and get out at a profitable exit. I understand that. But you also want to take that shit to social media. How do I know that? Because you're quick to give me feedback that I didn't ask for and you shouldn't be providing. You're pushing a button when you're told not to. And you're frustrated because you can't bring your receipts to the people you want to flex on. And you don't think I know that? I know it. I can see how you're talking to other people. <laughs> your tweets are right there. But you have selective memory. Oh, I better not do that anymore. Right. So I don't give a shit what your results are unless I ask for it. I can't spend your money. I'm not going to lose sleep over the losing trade. So I'm not interested. We're not even in that stage of the mentorship yet where you're supposed to be pushing a button. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. You will be prompted to do certain things in your paper trading account, in your demo account, in the observations at that time. I want to hear your feedback then. Not right now. You haven't even learned how to walk yet. And some of you want to run a marathon and carry your friends and neighbors on the back of you. Like you can conquer all things and fucking sparks shoot out your ass. You want attention and you don't have any skill set to command that attention right now. You have to learn how to do this properly. You have to filter out all these characteristics that make up who you are as a person. As lovely as a person you probably are outside of these negative things for trading, you can't allow that stuff to come in here. Impatience. Unwillingness to follow instructions. If you can't follow my instructions, okay, and this is as plain as it's going to be. If you can't follow instructions that I'm outlining for you, that leads to you understanding how to do this independently without me and successfully, how the fuck are you going to follow your own trading plan all the time? Never deviate from it. You're not. And this is where you want to discover that problem in you, where it was no risk. You didn't lose any money. You didn't make money and attribute it falsely as skill. Like I did as a 20 year old. I thought I knew what I was doing and I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. <laughs> I'm telling you, please listen to me. Some of you are doing the same shit, even though you hear me telling you not to do it. And these are the reasons why. And the outcome will be these adverse effects, these results that you don't want. You're going to fail at this unless you listen to everything I tell you to focus on while you're learning. If you focus on that, you're giving yourself at least the fairest chance to get to it eventually. If you keep showing up and practicing, you will get it. It will happen. But most people will fail because they don't want to listen to the beginning or they don't stick to it long enough because their expectations on how long it should take for them to learn it is unrealistic. 
you're asking for me to teach more of the things that I know about the marketplace and little t- uh, tricks and caveats to uh, buying and selling and where the price should go and all that. You haven't even mastered the one thing that you're supposed to be focusing on right now. And you just want more entertainment, more talking points, more things to have in your social media equity curve. And some of you to have in your next mentorship. I know I'm going to have more days like this with you throughout this year. I don't like having these kind of discussions and I've had it with my paid members too. I had these, these are like woodshed moments, woodsheds when, when you when your parent took you out back and told you to break a switch off of a tree, peel it down, get the bark off of it. And you got it across your backside. Why? So that way you understand there's a consequence. Some of you don't realize that the consequences of what you're doing by being impatient or trying to find a trade. I'm trying to find a bias off of what, what these liquidity points are. You're not supposed to do that right now. That's not the focal point right now. What you're trying to derive from doing the tape reading is number one, you're learning patience. You're observing characteristics that price does at specific times of the day. By going into the charts and when I'm telling you the screenshot and when I'm telling you, look at this right here, whenever you hear me say that, that's like, unless I say the words, because sometimes I don't say because I'm wrapped up in the live stream and I, I can't think about everything at the time because I'm reading prices is happening on one minute candles. But whenever I say here, look at this or focus on here or watch this, treat that the same way as when I'm saying screenshot it. Because at that moment, there's something in the chart that you as a trader using my information, you're going to see something that's going to resonate with you as a setup. And if you're not doing this, you are not going to learn it. It's going to go right over your head. And come November, you'll be just like the dozen out there, the dirty dozen. It's probably not even not any <laughs> that will say everything I'm doing, improving. Won't make you money. You can't do it. It's unsustainable. It's not precise. You'll be a part of that group because it will feel like you have to do that because you won't be able to stomach the fact that you will know in hindsight, looking back, you've wasted your time and you didn't do the things that you were supposed to be doing throughout this year. It's hard being disciplined. I know. I know, man. I know. You feel like you want to be more productive. I get it. And I fucked myself up doing that same shit. I thought more was better. I got to be doing more than just this. No, just focus on this. I'm going to say something to you in closing. Because I said enough. And if I've upset you, if I've offended you, just know I'm talking from a point of caring. You didn't pay for this. I'm not getting ad revenue off of this. I'm talking to you because I want to see you do well. But there's a old story. Ed Cicada quoted part of it. And it's the Jade Master. And when I heard this story, it resonated a lot with me. Because as a martial artist, as a young man growing up, I was in several martial arts. And I always had this affinity for the Asian arts and their lifestyle and the, the master and the student comes to the master and you know, he submits himself to the process and all that business. It's funny in martial arts. Watch that ES run for that. Uh, 40, 18 and a half and 40, 20, 75 level where that buy side is. Just watch that now. The. Um, when I was in trading early on, trying to learn how to do all this stuff. I didn't have that discipline. But every time I joined a new martial art and got a new sensei, new instructor, <laughs> like whatever this guy would have said to do, I would have done it. And only just that. So in martial arts, I did really good. My friends, my close friends growing up, my best friend would tell you that, you know, I was I was pretty good at 
what uh, I was able to do. But when I tried to learn how to trade, every aspect of discipline, personal responsibility, and just focusing on the things that I'm only supposed to be focusing on right now until that technique is honed to a degree where I know, I know this. Then I can go into trying to learn something else. That's the proper way of doing it. Well, I didn't have that when I first started trading because I was too in a hurry to get out of the rat race. I wanted to stop working for the people I worked for who were taking advantage of me. I knew they were taking advantage of me. They knew that I knew they were taking advantage of me and still gave me nothing extra for working six days a week. So I know what it feels like for you. You think that, you know, I'm sitting on this mountain of cash and it's always been like that. No, I, I came from nothing. And I had to dig in and go through a whole lot of shit to learn discipline. I've not always been disciplined. And you can hear I'm chemically imbalanced. It's real hard for me to maintain a sense of rigid discipline. I was doing breathing techniques before I started this because I wanted to make sure I didn't go off the rails immediately. Dealing with the public, and this is why I want you to trust the fact that this is the last time I'm doing this, okay? I don't have the patience to deal with this many personalities and this many personality flaws, weaknesses, frailties, impatience, undisciplined, disrespectful. Those things make it difficult for me or any educator to teach a person that holds them and doesn't want to let go of them. And it's even worse when a student doesn't even recognize that that's what they're holding on to because they want to have it their way. They want to be trained their way. So when you have this, this story called the Jade Master, I shared it a lot when I was on Twitter before. And I'm sure it was, you know, looked at and dismissed. Oh, what is this guy talking about? This ain't important. Where's the order block stuff? I want to know about that. But I'm not going to read everything line by line. I'm just going to give you a real short version of it. This master of Jade is on the other side of the mountain. This young man, he's he's doing everything he can to you know, entertain himself, find its place in the world. And he says, you know what? I'm going to do better in life. I'm going to get a career and I'm going to go be a Jade Master. So I'm going to go to the Jade Master's house and ask him to teach me. So he journeys a long way. Gets there, finally gets an answer from the door. This old man comes to the door. He says, hello, how can I help you? He says, I want to learn Jade. Jade Master smiles, says, come on in. Invites him into his own home. They sit down. He makes him a cup of tea. They start talking about things that have nothing to do with Jade. But before he gets comfortable in the chair, the old man presses a piece of green stone in his hand. He tells him to hold on to it. He starts talking to him about things that the young man feels like this is foolishness. Much like many of you do when I'm talking like this or I'm doing the dry parts of my lectures in video or in Twitter spaces. You zone that out. And what's happening, what's actually happening is the teacher that knows better, that knows how the students should learn, and also to test the student aptitude, respect, and the ability to follow instructions, he's testing the first thing that's going to fold, which is patience. So he starts talking to him because he came to him for wisdom. So the wisdom, the first ingredient of success is patience. He's going to test this young man. Now, he's came there to learn how to do what? Master Jade. You can't understand how to master Jade until you know what it is. So the young man doesn't even appreciate the fact that he's been placed in a very comfortable setting with a master who has given his time and placed a piece of real Jade in his hand. But he thinks he's supposed to be doing something. 
He came there. He walked a long way. I've watched a lot of your fucking videos, ICT. I have notes. I got notebooks. I got all that shit. Stop talking to me about this dumb shit. Tell me how the market really works. Give me my entry pattern. Give me my, my setup. Where's my stop loss? How do I know when the fair value gaps stay open? And as soon as the young man's impatience wears thin on his first visit, he says, listen, listen, listen. Listen, I, I came here to learn about Jade. I don't care about the bullshit you're talking about. With all due respect, master, cut the bullshit. Show me how to do Jade. To which the young man waits for this new flood of information. The old man stands up, walks over to him, asks for the stone back, puts it in the tin on the shelf and tells him to go home. Come back in a week. The young man's like, what the hell this happened here? And he escorts him to the door and he goes home and spends a week away from him. Week comes back, knock on the door. Young man greets him at the door. The old man smiles, says, come on in. Once again, places that jade in his hands. And he sits down and he starts talking to him about shit that has nothing to do with jade again. This time, the young man lets him go on a little bit. But then, same impatience, interrupts him. Listen, listen, I don't think you understand. I, I don't care about the shit you're talking about. I came here to learn about jade. Same thing. Man stands up, asks for the piece of jade back, puts it back in the tin, tells him go home, come back in a week. Young man does it. Comes back, third week. He sits down. Guy says, listen, grab that broom over there and sweep this area of the house while I tell you about tree frogs. Well, that was it. Guy's like, listen, I don't give a fuck about tree frogs. I didn't come here to clean your fucking house. Here, this is the last time I'm going to ask you. Teach me about jade. Master goes into him, says, hand me the rock, puts it back in the tin, tells him go home, come back in a week. The guy comes back the next week, frustrated, but now nervous. He doesn't interrupt him. But he says to him, listen, I've listened to all your stories this time and I didn't interrupt you. But I don't feel like I've learned anything about Jade. The old man gets up, walks over to another tin on his shelf, reaches in, grabs a rock and tosses it to the young man. The young man catches it in the air, grabs it. He goes, tell me about that Jade. He goes, this isn't Jade. And the old man smiles. See, you're learning right now. By holding Jade, my experience, you can't appreciate it because you can't use it yet. That young man held on to a piece of genuine Jade. And then the master was teaching him patience and teaching him also the whole time what real Jade is in his hand. And the moment he felt that he wasn't learning shit, challenged the man. He submitted to the process, but still had a question of, do I really know anything after doing this? I told myself the whole walk here, every time I went home, sent home early. Next time I come back here, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. And this time I submitted to everything you said. I listened to your stories and I still don't feel like I've learned anything about Jade. And when he tossed him a rock that was green, but wasn't real Jade, he knew exactly at that moment he was not holding real Jade. So when you're looking at these price charts and I'm talking to you, over time, you're going to know where these moves are really not unfolding and when they're likely to really unfold. You're going to see real jade in the chart. You're going to see it. You're going to identify it. You'll know it's there because you've been holding it every day for months. But so many of you are that impatient young man or young woman. And you want it your way, delivered the way you want to hear it. And the people that know how to do things, we know how to teach it. We know how you're going to learn it. And certain things need to be experienced. Not taught in a book, not shown in a video. You have to put your nose in it. You have to handle it. You have to fondle it and feel like, okay, this might work and then it doesn't work. 
Okay, I got my hands and eyes all over this, and it doesn't work. What do you feel from that? The story never goes into detail about what that young man was doing with that piece of jade in his hand, but you know damn well he was doing what? He was fidgeting with it. The master knew that. He would be grinding his thumb against that rock, thinking, I want to strangle this old motherfucker. He will not stop talking about fucking tree frogs. This guy won't stop talking about the bullshit in his personal life. We don't care about Michael's personal life. Tell me about order blocks. Tell me about fair value gaps. Tell me what the algorithm's going to do. I'm showing you what the algorithm's going to do. And you're squeezing and grinding your patience against these candlesticks as I'm taking you through it. Just like that young man did with his fingers and palms of his hand, probably sweating too, grinding that piece of jade in his hand because his impatience was wearing on him. But all the while, while he toiled in that impatience, the master knew that he would understand what jade feels like because of that experience. Because that jade master was in that seat before, just like he was. That's how he was taught. And every jade master is taught the same way. And over time, less and less, the young man interrupted. That's the abbreviated version of the real jade master. The story is, shut the fuck up, show up every day, take notes. You're going to learn what you're going to learn. But you're going to hold yourself up. Worrying about shit that has nothing to do with anything. You're learning patience. Tape reading is teaching you patience. It's teaching you how to observe what the algorithm is doing. It's not realistic for you to know what the algorithm is going to do right now. If I tell you every minute fluctuation in price action, it teaches you nothing. It teaches you nothing. It's the equivalent of me giving you signals, setups. You need to find your way in these candlesticks that's going to mean something to you. That's what is the secret to this. You can't just take a ABC123 pattern, model, approach, system, something that tells you to buy and sell. You can't trust that wholeheartedly. You can't feel good about that. No one can. You can lie to yourself and say, oh, yeah, I, I could do that. As long as it makes money. Bullshit. You're going to have anxiety about the next one. Hope it works like the last one did. Whereas when you understand how to read price action, you dismiss that whole notion of, I hope it does. Uh, you don't need it. Hope. You're going to do it wrong. You're going to make a mistake. You're going to read it wrong. You're going to internalize it wrong. But it doesn't undo the central tenets to what makes these markets book price. You made the mistake. You own it. It's the responsibility. It's on you that you made the error. But many of you are showing characteristics that you don't have that capability to be that responsible, that patient, or even aware that you're learning right now, but it doesn't feel like it because you have what? What are you measuring it against? You're thinking that your measurement stick, the measuring stick for your success is getting funded, getting a withdrawal in, in profits and making money and spending money, getting something that you can spend. When you're getting experience right now, you're getting it at a breakneck speed. You're literally getting doused with experience every single day. But because it's coming at you at warp speed, you're again going back to what you came here with, your unrealistic expectations of thinking about you should be learning how to do this in a short period of time. Listen, folks. Everybody out there that says you can learn this real fast in 40 days, 80 days, 120 days, a one week boot camp. Where's all their profitable students at? Where are they at six months later? There's a lot of people out there that have taken my content, repackaged it, and they're getting a splash over. Like with anything, you know, sometimes shit works and it's just blind luck. I'm a, I'm a poster child for that when, as a 20-year-old, using retail garbage, buying in a market that was already going to go up anyway. That's not skill. But you see them out there parading their, my students are funded. Look at all these certificates on the fucking wall. How many of those certificates and the holders thereof are still fucking funded six months later? 
that's what I'm trying to produce. Longevity. I don't give a fuck if you just get funded. That's not where this ends with me. I want to change your whole family fucking tree. Your certificate, as good as it feels for you, that's nothing. That just means you paid attention for a little while. That's all it means. It's a participation prize. I'm not trying to diminish it, but this is is real with it now. I'm telling you as your mentor, all that is is a participation award. That is not living on your trades. Not trading for a living, not growing wealth. That's just you participated in something. Here's your, here's your certificate. And what are you going to do with it? You're going to go out on social media. And this is why I don't want to retweet anymore because I'm not, billing, I'm not building an affiliate with anybody. I'm not going to be doing affiliate links with funded accounts. I'm not doing any of that bullshit. Okay, I'm not trying to build a partnership with any company outside of me. It is what it is. But these certificates, that's just... One small little token that's been used as a wonderful marketing ploy. Because when you have that certificate, what's the first thing you want to do? Go on social media. And then what happened also was you show it to ICT and you say, I used your, rep- your, your, your repertoire, your, your arsenal of weapons and things in trading. And I was funded and I want to be an encouragement to you. So I retweet it. And then what I'm actually doing is I'm fucking marketing for these companies that I have no affiliation with and I have no affinity for. What I want to see is six months after I stop in November, I want to see the students that come forward and say, I'm still making money. Here's my proof. Here's my results today. Here's my results for the month. Here's my results for the last six months. And when I'll be back here another year, and I'll show you what I took out at the end of the year. That's the results and receipts I'm working for. I want you to have that. I don't give a fuck about your funded certificate account, and you shouldn't either. Some of you think that's the end. Like, that's the touchdown. That's the, that's, you've made it now. Woo! Look at me. Look at me. I got this name that was given to me at birth. I didn't earn. And it's on a piece of paper that ain't even paper. It's just a digital image. And I get it. It feels awesome. Yes, that's progress. But that's not what I'm fucking teaching you to do. I'm teaching you how to make real fucking money consistently, week after week, month after month, year after year, change your whole fucking family tree. I'm not here for some fucking certificates to be mounted on my motherfucking wall and brag about that. I want your story. I want to hear the legacy that you're leaving. Fuck those fucking certificates. That's nothing. That's literally nothing. That's a Hallmark card. That's a love you letter that you wrote to yourself. Here it is. Here's proof that you did something right. Awesome. But don't just look at that and think, that's it, I've arrived. That's nothing. You just started now. Now you got to outperform yourself. Dig in. This is legacy. It's not social media equity curve. It's not affirmation. Let me get the other people around me to to, to say I'm doing good. When you're making fucking money, you don't need anybody else to tell you you're doing good. You don't need to do that shit. You don't need to go to social media and show some bullshit results because you're living on it. You don't care who believes what you make. Nobody gives a fuck what other people think when you got money. I don't give a fuck. My entire career has been on the basis of what? A fucking demo account. (laughs) A demo account. Seriously. And it works because you have tested it yourself. It matters not if I've done it with a live account. You've seen it in a demo account. I showed you with one contract. I can make 100% in five weeks. Last year, right over there on Twitter. Now on Twitter, on uh, YouTube. What takes other traders a whole year or more to get that same return. You are learning how to master money, not be a slave to it. And in the beginning, any small victory, any small victory is what you feel like you need to keep pressing forward. And some of you, unfortunately, want to do that prematurely with trades. I just need that 
that little affirmation, that little nudge. This is going to work for me. I know he said, don't push a button. I know he said, don't trade, but I, I got, I have to, Michael, if you could just feel what it feels like to be inside this skin of mine, I got to wake up every day and do this dumb shit and make no money. I'm in a country that doesn't make any fucking money. And I, I'm in an impoverished nation. I, I didn't have a father. I didn't have a mother. You know, I, I, I can't get a job with my, my college degree. I dropped out of college. I couldn't afford it. My mom and dad don't do this for me. I, look, listen, listen. All that stuff may be true. I didn't have my father. He was a contract murderer. He's serving life sentences in prison. My mother didn't want me. I grew up in a neighborhood that was considered white trash. The white ghetto. I had everything stacked against me. Everything. I had no pedigree that had money before me. I had no advantages where people could help me get into certain things, fall into certain you know, perfect scenarios for jobs. I didn't have any of those advantages. I didn't have this, where somebody's whipping my ass in the shape when I'm doing stupid shit. Get me back on the rails. Keep me focused. Let me tell you something. My feelings would not have been fucking hurt because this is exactly how my grandfather talked to me. And I miss it. I wish I could hear that Navy man whip my ass and get, look, get your head in the fucking game. Focus on this. What are you looking at that shit for? This is what you're supposed to be focusing on right now. Yes, sir. I didn't have that when he passed away. He didn't see me do this. You have someone in me that proves that we can do this consistently. I'm teaching you how to do it. I'm giving you a mindset, a way of thinking about it, how to conquer your demons, wrestle with them, pin them, beat their fucking ass. But you have to show up and do everything I tell you to do. And everything I tell you not to do, you need to keep it away. Filter it. Cope. Whatever you got to do, But you cannot, you cannot bring your opinion about what it is and how it is that you should be trained when you don't even know what you're going to be doing as a trader. Do you even know? You don't. You have an inkling. Oh, I'd like to be able to trade this uh, model 2022. Okay. Can you really break down that model? Do you know it like the back of your hand or that you see it after the fact in the chart? Because if you know it, you can see it when it unfolds in real time. But if you're only able to see it after the fact, you don't know it. You're still learning. And it's easy to talk yourself into you know more than what you really do. Because when I was a young man, I was talking all that shit to my friends. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know how to do this and I know how to do that. When I was still struggling. And they didn't know enough to say you're full of shit. They just saw me making money. But they didn't know I was wrestling with five other fucking trades that just barely blew my fucking account out. And the shit that most of you are doing right now is very similar to that. You're focusing on just making it to a positive outcome, but showing no public display or voicing what it was like for you to get through the other shit to that. And that's how I teach. I teach all sides of it. You're going to get the good. You're going to get the bad, the sweet and the sour. And sometimes you're going to get a woodshed moment. You want that. Trust me. For some of you that are foreign, you get very easily offended with people like me or Americans because we sound arrogant. When you know something and you're confident, it sounds like arrogance. It's not. I'm not arrogant. I know where I got all this from. But I also know that humans have tendencies to overcomplicate things and make excuses for why they fucked it up themselves. They prolong the experience more than it needs to be. So when I tell you don't push a button, don't even try to push a button. The benefit is you're going to get so bored with seeing what these things are doing. All these setups, 
and you're not going to have any impulsive rush, this impatience to do something with a monetary reward or fear that it's going to lose. See, I say this a lot, but you plug your ears. You don't want to hear about it because you know damn well tomorrow, later today, Friday, you're going to be listening to something, whether I say it or someone else is going to say it, and it's going to inspire you to do what? Gamble. And you just need a scratch-off win experience. You want to go there and buy a scratch-off, scratch it off, and guess what? You made 50 bucks. You made 100 bucks. But what's it worth if you were sweating bullets the entire time? You didn't learn anything. You're going to try to ignore all the uncomfortable feelings that you had while you took that trade if you did it. And you're just going to try to sugarcoat it with, hey, I made money. Let me go over on social media so I can ignore all of the fucking bullshit I had to endure for this little tiny peanut of a win. Which I won't be able to repeat anyway because I don't know what I'm doing. That's the reality of it, folks. And you know damn well what I just said was the absolute truth. But you never would admit it on social media. But if we were talking at the pub, at the bar, at the restaurant, and you want to have a meal and talk to Marcus with me, that's what we would be talking about. You would confide in me in that setting, but not in front of other people where you can be judged and laughed at. You're all that are pushing the button to get trades. You're trying to lie to yourself the wrong way. You want to be able to tell yourself, you can do this when you're not ready. And you'll lie to yourself and say that you are ready and you'll do stupid shit like go and try to get a funded account, put live account funds at risk when you don't even have a track record to prove it. There's a reason for you to be doing that. Are you consistent? Because the only thing consistent most of you are probably feeling right now is that you're uncertain about what it is you're going to do. That's the that's the measure of uncertainty you have. Right? I mean, that's the consistency rather is the uncertainty you have. And that's normal. But some of you are uncomfortable in that state so much that you're willing to do anything to distract yourself from feeling that. Much like that young man with that piece of jade in his hand. He wanted to throw that rock, I'm sure, at that jade master's forehead. Shut the fuck up. I, I need to do something. I got shit to do, man. There's cars. There's women out there I want to entertain. And I'm not trying to be brash, but young man, you know exactly what the hell you're trying to do this for. Okay. Yeah, you want to flex with your friends and look good and everybody's like, yeah, this guy's got, got it all put together. But you want to go out there and floss in front of these young women and be a dog. That's exactly why you're trying to do this. And you're going to fail. So let me just remind you, you're not going to be doing very much of that because you're doing all the wrong things in the beginning. And you're probably going to spare a lot of fathers, daughters, heartaches because of it, because you're going to fail. But for the folks that are really trying to make a, a way for themselves and find the approach to doing this consistently and finding profitability, you're going to sacrifice. You're going to put aside that feeling of, I got to get through this quicker because I'm uncomfortable. I don't feel like I'm being productive. I got to get through this part real quick. And you won't take notes. You won't study. You won't desensitize yourself by going through these very moments where it's uncomfortable not knowing what it is that you're supposed to be getting from it until you get it. And then when you get it, that experience, you think to yourself, wow, I didn't I didn't expect to learn what I just learned. Now that I know, wow, that's a totally different perspective I hold over myself as a speculator and what I'm learning. And I know enough and good educators know enough that they have to put the students in the laboratory experiment repeatedly before they can observe the measure of change, learning, and understanding. Every day I'm giving you that green rock. Some of you want to take that green rock and be an alchemist and turn into real money right now. And you're not ready. And you're going to get frustrated because you couldn't do it faster and lose sight of what I'm reminding all of you is slow down. You can do this. But you cannot do it consistently 
by rushing into pushing the button. Because you don't have the experience to know and trust that your progress can be measured without you doing any button pushing right now. For those that have a long-term relationship right now, and I promise I'm going to end it here. If you have a long-term relationship, spouse, you're married, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, you're just really committed to this person, you've been with them for a long time. When you met them, did you try to do all the stupid shit that you know that you're probably comfortable doing in front of them now? Would you be willing or would you have been willing to do all those things on your first date? No. No way. Not if it was somebody that you wanted to have a relationship with, that you were attracted to, you felt an affinity for. You want to you want to secure that one. This one's the one you want to take home and show mom. This is the one you want to build a relationship with. You wouldn't do those things that you know are uncivilized, rude, unpleasant. You wouldn't show that side of you that you know is in you when you lose all control, rage. Or upset and you show your emotions and you act out. You wouldn't do that. Why? Because you know enough that that's going to do what? It's going to mar any chance of that relationship blossoming. You don't want to put any kind of thorns in that rose garden. So you do what? You prune. You're on your best behavior. You hold a door for her. You, you speak pleasantly. You allow the conversation to be mostly about her. You're gentlemanly. You, when you come here and you're trying to learn how to do this and you're pushing all the buttons, you're doing the very thing that you wouldn't do if you were trying to secure a long-term relationship with the significant other that you're with now. You're trying to do that here. It's equivalent to coming out here wearing the same underwear for the last three fucking days. You need a shower. You ain't shaved. You're unkept. You look like a fucking animal. That's that's the equivalent of what you're doing. By pushing a button, you're uncivilized. You're undisciplined. And you're trying to communicate to your inner self and others around you that see you that you're the caveman of the walk. Like You, you got it all together. Anybody out there outside your cave, you go out there with your club, bonk it over the head, drag it back to your cave. You're the, you're the man. You don't have to submit to the process. Everybody else is expected to. When the only thing you're doing is assuring that you're going to fail, look stupid if you try to show your results to other people when they ask for it. You talk too much. You don't have the receipts. And you can't do it. And you're looking for one hit wonders. To just give you that little bit of a nudge to get through the pain and uncomfort that you're feeling right now. Because you can't wait through the normal process of growth. That's why ladies, that's why the women in my fold and in general in trading are better. Yes, young men and old guys too. The women are better traders. Now... Competition traders, men tend to be better because they're reckless. They'll take bigger bets and they'll gamble because they don't give a fuck. They don't measure the outcome as, well, you know, if I'd lose it all, you know, fuck it, things happen. A woman would never do that. She has nesting qualities about her. And if you ever had a child with one of them, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Shit, as soon as, as, soon as they're pregnant. They're already, the whole house is turned upside down. They got to buy all kinds of fucking shit and they got nine months still. I have anxiety and I have multiple kids. And every time it was ex it was very stressful. You would have thought that she's having a kid tonight. In four hours, we're going to have this baby. And you can't even tell she's pregnant by looking at her. But they had these nesting qualities about themselves. Because what? It's in their hardwiring. They know they got to get shit done. They got to be organized. They got to be on time. 
it has to be this way. And that's why we as men, we buck heads with them because we want to do shit our way on our own time schedule. And all these things that make us human beings, if you don't master them, they're going to manifest in your, your trading. You don't realize it, young men, because you haven't found yourself in a situation where you have to act like a man. Be in a relationship. Hold down a job long term. Build a home. Secure a home. Right now you're young. You're just chasing tail. Trying to look good with your friends. Get your bag. And have fun. But at some point when you mature a little bit more, you're going to know the things I'm talking about now that are impacting you. That are making you reckless as a trader because you're reckless as, as a young man. You can't operate like that in the marketplace. And when you start having things of consequence that are a well, a real loss if you do things recklessly, which is why I mentioned, you know, if you had a child that you had to take care of, and every trade that you took had an impact on whether that child would eat or not. I was not trying to communicate a way for you to be stressful about taking your trades. That's not that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is if you're trading for a living and you're trading an account that is only there to make your ends meet, you have other accounts that you use to speculate and grow wealth with. I'm talking about one account that you use to get your ends met, whatever that grocery bill is. You're not. You're not going to look at that candlestick if you're responsible. If you're a parent that cares for that child and wants to weigh out risk and not do things impulsively, you're not going to just push the button because you have time to do so. You're going to be more diligent about what it is you're doing to manage that risk. You're going to look at the charts and think to yourself, why am I going to take this trade? Does Carl fucking Jr. have a plate full of food tomorrow if I do this trade? Or am I going to fucking carl it all up and do some stupid shit and margin call myself? Because i am got an itch to scratch. Don't be a fucking carl. You want to know what you're doing, why, when, and how. Every trade that you take is uncertain. There's no guarantee it's going to pan out. But you know exactly what you're doing when you're goofing off. Pushing the button when you have no business doing so. You can't do that when you have a real responsibility attached to it. Think about what I was teaching in the ends series on YouTube. I'm taking everything that I taught on my channel that teaches you how to trade. And then I'm taking it to the real world. Not Lamborghini lifestyle. Not Ferrari lifestyle. Not get rich real quick. Not 200 R multiple lifestyle. Give me a major bill covered each month. That's that's where I try to teach my students. It's real world. It makes it practical. It allows you to do what? Associate it with your own personal life. You may have children. You may have a, a spouse that you have to coexist with. And they may not like the idea that you're risking money because they don't understand what it is you're learning. But that shit changes real fast when the fucking grocery bill is now paid for every month. And that unsupportive spouse or boyfriend or girlfriend partner that wasn't so supportive of the idea in the beginning will suddenly think totally different about it. Wow. Look how much better things are because you had the, the courage to do that. And they will be more supportive. You'll get the very things that you want people to do for you right now when you haven't even earned the right to get it yet. So you want people to say, like I wanted people to say, you're doing a good job learning how to trade. What the fuck? Nobody congratulates anybody. Hey, you're doing a good job getting through it. That's the equivalent of saying, hey, congratulations, you're still married. What the fuck? You're not in the marriage to hear that. You're in the marriage to, to have that relationship. You're there for the relationship. You're not there for the congratulatory, 
hand slaps and, and shoulder pats. Hey, good job, man. You, you still, you're still existing. <laughs> you can still, you still live with her. In deference to the women, you can still live with him. So you have to make your trading realistic. It has to be practical. It has to be measured in a practical, realistic way. And the only way you can do that is by doing what I teach you. Keep it in the beginning away from the money. If you have people that are in your life that you that, that know that you're doing this or making an attempt to do this, they don't have any evidence to, to support you doing it. In fact, if they're going to be honest with you, and some of them probably would never want to do this to hurt your feelings, but they don't believe you're going to be successful. And I've already tweeted this morning, most of you are going to feel like you're going to never do this. And some of you are going to absolutely fail, regardless of what I teach, however I do it, whatever it is, you're still going to fail. It's just the way it is, folks. It's hard. You can't get out of your own way. You're going to fail. And it takes a lot of discipline to keep doing the right things all the time and not do the wrong things. And like that young man with the green stone in his hand that he didn't realize was jade and he was being conditioned to know what jade feels like in his hand. You're in that moment right now. It's uncomfortable in the chair with me listening to these types of things because it feels like I got better things to do, man. Fuck this old guy. I'm not listening to this bullshit. Give me an RSI, you know, fucking moving average. I'm out of here. Okay. Good luck. I really want you to succeed. And if you can find success in anything else, I'm all for it. Do it. There's other ways out there to make money. Yes, absolutely. I didn't tie you to a chair here. I didn't drag you here. I'm not holding you against your will. You're not all hostages here. But I've never seen anybody out there teaching how to trade, how to look at the marketplace the way I do it, the way it delivers, and also how to make it practical for you to go out in the real world and do something with it and not have it wrapped up with get rich. You can get rich doing this. Absolutely can. You can get rich digging for oil in your backyard too. Highly unfucking likely. <laughs> hey, but there's potential, right? So you got to just constantly be reminded that this is a progress that you're going to go through, a process that you have to submit to, and it's not easy. It's not. It's not quick. It's not an easy solution. It takes a lot of effort, a lot of work, and a lot of cheerleading that you got to get from the, me. And you have to do it to yourself, which is what you do in your journal. You don't let anything negative in your journal, period. That is your love letter to yourself. You're literally writing to your future self. Sweet nothings. No, you didn't really see that trade forming. But in that journal, you're going to say, I have loved you since the first time I saw you. I knew I was going to have a happy life with you, whatever your model is. And over time, you have conditioned your subconscious to view everything about these fucking candlesticks as a love story to you. You can't wait to be in them again. You can't wait to spend more time looking into their eyes, gazing into their beauty, watching how they stroll across the canvas of our charts. Some of you young guys can look, I love the way her ass swishes to the left and the right when that candle mo and it forms. It hits a little bit different now, doesn't it? <laughs> you have to fall in love with this, folks. It has to be a passion. That nobody outside of you, unless they're a trader, is going to understand. But when that happens, success is just a matter of time. You won't look at these small little speed bumps in the beginning where you feel like you have to compensate for feeling not like you're producing anything of value or progress. In the beginning of anything, weight loss, weight training. Martial arts, flexibility, none of these things can be seen in the early stages right away. It hurts many times because you're putting a lot of effort in there. You're 
foregoing what you would do with your friends and family. You're doing something that takes a lot of your attention. Even when you're not in these charts, you knew damn well you're thinking about the shit you've been learning. You're driving. You can't look at charts. You're driving, looking at the fucking traffic signals and such, looking at people. Oh, man, some bullshit. I'm, I'm telling you what, man, I can't wait. I get my account where it needs to be. I ain't got to sit with these motherfuckers out here in this traffic. I ain't never going to deal with this shit again. You're thinking about it constantly. You've placed a lot of pressure on yourself. Don't add to it by doing dumb shit. You're not supposed to be pressing the button. You're not supposed to be gambling. You're not trying to reward yourself with a participation award. A demo trade win. An overzealous live trade entry on your funded account or your live account. Just to give you a little bit of a nudge to get through the pain of going through it. Nope. Just squeeze that green stone. Squeeze it in your palm. You're learning. You're learning. You have no idea how much you're learning, but you're learning. And in the future, when you start looking at these candlesticks, they're going to start telling you a story. As soon as you look at them, they're going to, you'll know exactly what you're going to be doing and when not to touch it. So if I've offended you, just know I've done it so you could be better because of it. I've not done it to hurt anybody's feelings. I've not done it to make any of you feel like I don't want to see you succeed because I do. But I know foolish bullshit that I did and other people doing over the years that I've been teaching. I know the outcome of that. It's never good. It never produces consistent profitability. It's despite whatever you might think. Oh, I don't, I don't look at it like that. I see you just don't know <laughs> if I could just get one win. If you could just give me one trade a week. Yeah. Okay. And then it would be like, uh, can you do another one? Because, you know, it, it would really encourage me if I did two of them a week. Then it's daily. Can you do it in crypto? So it, it becomes like an, I'll never scratch every itch. So I have to stick to what I know works. If you stay with it, you'll learn. If you give up, you failed. That's it. There's, there's no, no other worry about it. It's just those are two outcomes. You show up every day and you put your ass to the grindstone and just work and work and work towards this and fall in love with it. Love it. When these young men and women go out to the gym and they aren't in the shape that they're in when you see them and they're thinking, man, I wish I could look like that. That guy looks like an action figure. And that woman looks like she's chiseled. They didn't look like that when they first started working out. I guarantee you, they're thinking in the beginning, fuck this shit. I ain't, I ain't got to do this, man. <laughs> what, what am I doing all this for again? Uh, it's leg day. Fuck that. I ain't going in there today. No. They felt it, and they said, fuck this. I'm still going in there. And once I get through it, I'll be glad I did. And as soon as you're in the first set, they're thinking, I could have stayed him, and I would have been regretting this. The first set, you get through it. And you'll be glad you're there. Well, every day when you show up, as soon as we start and we start seeing these candles start painting, you're glad you showed up. And let that passion pursue excellence. Constantly striving for more understanding, but being realistic about where you are in your learning. Don't have high and lofty thoughts about what you think you should know right now because you shouldn't know much at all. You're learning who you are. Remember, these markets are a mirror. These charts is a scrying mirror. A scrying mirror is something that you cast a vision inside of. It's a, basically a big black bowl. But when you're looking at these charts, you're going to see what you want them to tell you. In the beginning, that's what you're seeing. You're not seeing what they're telling you. You're seeing what you want them to submit to, your will. And you have to overcome that. And the only way you can observe what that is like and what it means to see it like that is by being in the charts continuously every single day. And you're going to see, oh, I was trying to make something happen in the chart. I was trying to see something that really wasn't there. And you have to identify that, and then you have to cope with it and overcome it. Because no matter what anybody teaches, whether it be my stuff, me doing it, or anything else, until you tackle that, 
you're going to be an impediment to your development and success because you're going to do dumb shit. You're going to be rushing to demonstrate something. A friend showed you how to do something. Look at this over here. Watch this. Oh, let me, let me, let me try. I know how to do that. You don't know how to do shit. You don't know how to do any of this yet. But you're rushing to get out there so you can fail and feel miserable about it. And then you want to do what? You want to fix that Band-Aid issue by giving yourself a winning trade, pushing the button. And that compensates for what? The impatience of going through the process, which is what everybody is expected to do. And everybody that's profitable, that's long-term consistently profitable, they all have the same boring monotonous beginning just like you're going through right now and they hated it just like everybody i hated it i fucking hated it i needed it to happen sooner and i was trying to do everything i could to get through it faster and the only thing by doing that was i made it longer but i didn't understand the things i was doing and the way i was thinking about it was making it harder for me and made it longer than it needed to be you think you're getting shortcuts by doing stuff like that. A little bit of a, a bump of encouragement. Nope. Because as soon as you do it and it gives you the result you're looking for, what are you going to do? I felt good. Let me do it again. You get in an argument with your girlfriend? Oh, good. Let me just do boop. There it is. Let me do another trade. I need to feel good about myself. And you know, she, she called me a name. She didn't want to spend time with me. Got fired. I didn't get a promotion. Fucking Carl. You're going to reach for your trading account to make yourself feel good. How's that any different than grabbing a syringe and dosing up with heroin? Doing a line of cocaine. Ain't no different. Ain't no different at all. And un unfortunately, this could be more expensive than that shit. Because you can lose your entire account on one trade. Doing dumb shit. Trying to compensate for something you feel uncomfortable out in life. I did that. Failed first marriage. My first couple of years as a trader, I was trying to fix that. That feeling of she left me for an older guy. And the whole, the whole world, my whole world knew it. That was embarrassing. But you know what? It made me who I am today. I'm able to talk to you and counsel you about those types of things because I'd made errors I lost money trying to fix an emotional deficit. I didn't feel, I mean, I was a good looking guy, but I didn't want to be with other people because I felt like I was supposed to be with just her when it was impossible. It wasn't going to happen. So to compensate, I would go in and take trades recklessly because I thought if I make a lot of money real fast, I'd win her back. When in reality, I should have never wanted her back. Everything about her was wrong for me. But I allowed my emotions to commit myself to doing stupid shit, trying to win her attention. And you're doing that same shit with these foolish fucking trades. You're trying to hold on to toxic relationships. And you're trying to start toxic relationships. You know there are certain people you should not be engaging in on a personal level. It doesn't matter if you need that scratch itched on the weekend, one night stand. And this goes for both of you, men and women. You know damn well you shouldn't be doing that because the outcome is not what? Favorable. But you want to do what? Just feel good for a little while. Feel wanted. Feel sexy. Feel appreciated. Feel chased and pursued. And you're going to try to manifest that stuff in charts. You're going to try to do that in your trades. You're going to try to do that in your speculation and wanting some emotional stimuli as a way of overcoming some deficit. And you can't do that. Because if you do it, it's going to cause problems. You're going to have a, a hard way of doing this as a trader and developing early on. It's going to be a, an impossibility. But I'm going to close it on that. I just want you to know that there's a, a right way to do this and a wrong way. And I'm trying my best to keep you on the right path. And if you've maintained this entire conversation stayed with me this entire time, you probably got the right mindset for it. Until next time, be safe.